Welcome everyone to this GIMP tutorial. I'm going to show basically a converted tutorial that was from Photoshop, Photoshop Elements to GIMP. And what we're going to be doing with this hibiscus flower is changing it to a watercolor. And how we're going to do that is we're going to do basically the what the tutorials show you in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, but now I've made it so it will work in GIMP. It will give it the layered effect like you see in a lot of the watercolor. So it's really a neat little effect. Works real well. I thought I'd share what I uh, figured out here with you guys. So let's get right to it. The only things you're going to really need to have in here, and if, even then that's optional, is a set of watercolor brushes. You can get them from anywhere. The ones I will be using today in this demo came from DeviantArt.com by a user named Chris Design, who came up with three animated brushes for GIMP that are just wonderful. They work great for this. However, you don't need to have them, but it will do a little bit better job of a realistic um, effect to your photo. The other thing I did is I got some uh, paper texture, watercolor paper texture. I got that from a different site. The link is pretty long. So I'll probably either put the link in the video here in post-production, or I will put the link in the little YouTube box so you can um, go ahead and get it that way. But if you've got watercolor or textures on hand, or if you can take a picture of a watercolor paper and put it in, that that will work great too. That's also optional, but if you want to make it look like you actually did paint this on that type of paper, you might want to get you a copy of it. So, without that, uh, oh, one last thing. If you do have a pressure sensitive tablet, I have one, but I will not be using it for this demo. I just want to show that you don't have to have a tablet to get this to work correctly. You can use a mouse, and that's what I'll be using this morning on this demo. So, with all those out of the way, Disclaimers, blah, 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 blah. Let's get to the fun stuff. Let's actually make this work. So I got my picture here. I'm using this hibiscus. First thing you want to do is you want to duplicate the layer. You can click on this button here. You can right-click on here. I'm just going to go ahead and just right-click and say duplicate layer. There's several different ways to do it in GIMP. And on this top layer here, you, we need to change the colors in here. Because this is very photographic, and we want to take it to more of a painterly type of idea. Um, now, I learned that technique from uh, actually watching, a few, uh, and I'll be honest, some Linda.com tutorials on a gentleman there that does teach you how to convert things to paintings. And he is correct. You've got to change that color space, or it doesn't quite look correct. So the way I do it here in GIMP is I'll go to Colors at the top, to Saturation. I'll crank up my saturation all the way up because I'm going to make these as vivid and popping as I can. And I'm going to go about 30, 30, maybe 40. We'll go ahead and go to 40 on here. 40, 41. And click OK. What you want to do is, is change the way the colors are represented because that is going to be a big thing coming up, and you'll see why. Now we need to tone down the details a little bit. And what I do for that is I go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And while Gaussian Blur is up, I will take a look, see how the details are. I don't want to wipe them out completely, but I do want to keep a little bit in there. But I just need to knock that dang detail down a little bit because it is too popping. Because, again, we want this to be more of a painterly effect more than we do a, um, a photograph. So now we got that. I'm going to duplicate it. This layer we've been working on, we're going to be duplicating it. So I'm going to click down here to duplicate it. Now with this layer selected, I want to go to Colors, Invert. That now inverts the colors which is what we want to do. Trust me, we want to do this. And the final thing we want to do for this layer right now is go to up here where it says uh, Mode Normal. Click here, and you want to go to Addition. 
it will turn the canvas completely white. This is what we want. Now, you notice on some watercolors, somebody will sketch out kind of what they want, and then they'll paint it in. Now, some will not do this, <clears throat> but I'm following the, the style of the ones who do sketch it in and, and color it in. So we're going to go back down to the one we were working on, the one we made so nice and bright and vivid. I'm going to duplicate it. Now, you can move this layer in a few different ways. You can click on the up arrow, move it up. I'm just going to grab a hold of the little thumbnail and start moving it. You notice how I get kind of like that little arrow thing in there? And, um, pardon me, the arrow thing going on. Just when you move it you know, above the layer, you see like a little bar that it, it comes a, up on top of the bar there. I'm sorry, on top of the layer there. So we'll click there and drag it. <clears throat> and then drop it by releasing your mouse button and brings this up. Now what we're going to do is we want to go to colors, desaturate. I'm going to just use lightness. You can, depends on your image, choose which one of these will give you a good result. And what we're doing here is we're actually changing this to a quick pe uh, pencil sketch. There are several different ways you can do it. This is the way I'm doing it, just to do a quick and dirty and nasty way of doing it. However, when you do the technique, when you're doing this step of it, hey, whichever way works for you, go for it. Now I'm going to go to filters, edge detect, different of Gaussians, difference of Gaussians, I'm sorry. Can't speak today. And what I'm going to do is take a look at this, and I'm going to crank these up to match. Actually, I want to get like a very charcoal-ish looking effect. I don't want too much here. That looks pretty good for me. Click OK. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit because I don't need all that detail. I just kind of need some of it. And the quick way you can clean this up is go over to Colors. I choose levels, and the one I'm going to probably do to kind of clean some of this up here is move this middle one. I'm going to move it to the left. Okay, and I might darken my lines just a little bit. I don't want to get them too, too dark, and you'll see why in a moment we don't want them super dark. So I just kind of want to... Get some detail in, maybe I'll back that black off a little bit. Here we go, kind of like that. That'll work for me. Click OK. Now, to, as a starting point for blend mode for this, because we need to blend it down so we can see what we're getting ready to work on, a good starting blend mode for this will be actually multiply. It's a good starting point. We will be adjusting it, but good starting point, this will get us going. Now, we want to select this layer, the negative looking image here. You want that one selected. Then we're going to go over here, select our brush tool. We want the foreground color to be black. Dynamics. Now, if you have a pressure-sensitive tablet, please leave. you can leave this one alone if you like because that's going to give you actually the best result. But since I'm not using a pressure-sensitive tablet and I do not want anything to kind of affect how my mouse is working right now, just to doubly ensure it, I'm going to click on that little box right there, click on Dynamics Off, and now I've got full control. I want to go to the opacity. I want to set this to about 10% or so. You can type in 10 if you want. I'm going to click on the brushes. Now, when you, you go to get those in brushes, I know at least in the Windows version of GIMP, your custom brushes that you install will be on the top. And there's my watercolor one I'm choosing right there. You see a bigger preview of it right here. See how it has the nice edges and stuff? That's going to look totally, totally cool when we get done with this. 
Again, making sure that the gray box or the blue box is right here. Using a trick to, instead of just coming over here and sliding or typing in numbers and guessing, I'm going to guess on screen by showing my little preview of my brush right here. I'm going to hit my bracket keys on the keyboard and pressing down on the right bracket here and making this quite big. And what we're getting ready to do now is do what's called an undercolor. So, or the underpainting, I'm sorry. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of start right here, kind of click and hold on my mouse, and just drag. The more uneven you are with your mouse, the actually the better this will work for this effect. I'm just going to quickly just kind of knock this out. Now, when you guys do your own conversions, I mean, be a lot more careful than me. I'm just kind of knocking this out real quick just to demo the technique, but once you guys have the technique in hand, then, I mean, A, knock yourself out to however you want your paintings to look. That's the whole idea of this. You can already kind of see on the screen. I'm going to zoom in. There's a trick to zooming in, too, if you, if you guys don't already know it with GIMP, is if you, on your mouse wheel, um, if you press control and then use your mouse wheel and then kind of roll the wheel forward, you can kind of zoom in and you can already see that painterly like look right down here especially. See how it's kind of layering up? That's the type of effect that you want. I'm going to go one more time and you notice how I'm starting in different areas and um, that's mainly just to add more of that border effect or that more of that random border effect. So I'm going to quickly just knock this right out. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to take my brush and lower the size. And now what I want to do with the lowered size is I want to come in here and kind of start hitting the areas of the detail. I want to kind of bring out a little bit more, you know. I'm not being super precise. Again, when you guys do your artwork, you know, I would lower the brush a little bit smaller than I got mine, but just trying to knock this out real quick just to show you guys a technique or three just real quick I mean this this really I mean this can take a little bit depends on how detailed and how much you want to add into your artwork I however just like you see them right here just knocking this kind of out now I'm going to lower my brush down a little bit more. I'm going to add to these leaves just a little bit more darkness in some areas. Kind of simulate what I actually saw in real life. Kind of do this real quick. Then I'm going to really hit on these petals because I want these guys to really show up real nice. And here we go. As you see, I'm now more kind of staying in the lines on this. I'm trying to knock this out, make it look real nice. Yep. This looks real good. But it's going to look a lot better here in a moment. And again, now I'm not going to touch the leaves. Um, the plant, I'm going to actually just work on the petals and the interior. Again, I'm just doing this real quick. I'm using my own little way I should see this to happen. When y'all convert yours, hey, your artistic eye is, is pretty awesome at that and just let your creativity flow. Now I'm just going to kind of just hit the dark areas. Not really going to maybe one more time here and just kind of spread that under color out. I mean that base layer out just a little bit more. I think this is looking nice. There we go. Now that I'm done painting this, I'm saying I'm done. However, 
when you guys do yours, keep right on, keep right on trucking with it. I'm going to go up here to this layer, and like I said, it's a little harsh. So the first thing I'm going to experiment with is a blend mode. Let's try burn. Not bad. Still a little dark in areas, but not bad. Let's change this to an overlay. Mm -hmm. Kind of washes my painting out a little much. I don't want to use that one. Let's try soft light. Not much of a change. So I think I like burn, but I just need to tone it down some. So right below the mode select, you see opacity. Just make sure you got your layer that you want to affect selected. And just click in here and just bring down that opacity. So you get something that you like. Since mine is so strong, I don't need a very little bit. And you can tell it does add just a little bit in there. It's very no lightly noticeable. But it's there. If this is too strong and you get them, uh, like right here, this looks good, but it's kind of looking too strong, then again, you can bring up your colors levels again. And on the output levels, because this is black and it's just too strong, you want to go down here. And you can see how by moving that slider, I've toned that black down. There we go. I got it right about there. That looks good. But yeah, if you got it on a blue mode and you got blacks that are too strong, if you go to your levels, check your output levels, you can adjust that down. Now I got this the way I want it. That looks nice. You can see the builds up, build up of colors and everything else. Looks really nice. However, I want to kick this to that final level I was telling you guys about. You know, we're going to put this on paper. The way you do that now in GIMP, if you say uh, file open, it's going to open it in a new file. But we want to add this as a layer. So you want to go to file, open as layers, and you want to go to here. Go to where you've got it. I got it in a folder called tutorial. Select your texture and say open. Now, because I got the big, big, big version of the file, it, it zoomed right on into it and it looks like the surface of the moon, which is not what we want. So, using our little trick, we're going to hit control and scroll out some. As you can see by this dotted box, this thing is huge. We're going to fix that. We're going to click on the scale. Uh, make sure your layer is selected. Click on the scale tool. Click on the image. And we are going to scale this down. There's the top. There's the bottom. Left. right once you get it scaled down to how you like just say scale let GIMP do its thing it's done now we're going to hit control and zoom on in you can also use the keyboard shortcuts if that's easier for you now with this texture selected I'm going to go to mode I'm going to put it on overlay and you can already see the effect that it's having now, if that effect is a little too strong or rough, opacity is your friend. So make sure that layer is highlighted. Click over here and just drop that opacity to get what you want. Like right about there looks good to me. But again, adjust it, blend it, see how you like it. But there you go. As you can see, this looks like a very nice watercolor type of effect. Looks real nice. It'll probably print real nice too. So give this a shot, guys. Like I said, this is a conversion type tutorial, but I hope you all like it. I'll have more tutorials on the way. Appreciate you watching, and have a good day.